Hey everyone, it's Kyle, Azora Hype. Today I have a very special video for all of you, and what an amazing experience it was to interview Stephen Strait, who plays James Holden, and Wes Chatham, who plays Amos, from one of my favorite shows called The Expanse. Stephen and Wes were an absolute joy to interact with at DragonCon 2019, and I couldn't have pulled off this interview without the help of Ashea from History of Westeros, a great friend of mine, and Courtney Matza, who moderates for the amazing Game of Thrones group on Facebook, founded by Anton, who is also awesome. You can find the link to not only Ashea's social media in the description of this video, but also Courtney's as well. Of course, a big thank you to Steven and Wes for accepting this interview, and of course, the amazing support staff at DragonCon. I'm glad we had this talk, but please enjoy the interview. Next five, yeah, right? You, know. you, you guys cool if we record this, by the way? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Also, anything at all that you're like, please don't ask yeah. us about that. Anything? Yeah. Nothing Great. To I, uh, we actually watched some interviews together yeah. with you guys to see like what kind of uh -huh. questions you usually get. <laughs> <laughs> you might be a little burnt out on. Oh, a little research, <laughs> market research. Yeah. So, um, do you guys want to go first? Oh, we're cool with whatever. Yeah. So, uh, Stephen, specifically in a few different interviews, you talked about the archetypal structure of the hero's journey. Yeah. And uh, what that means for Holden. You talked about uh, failing forward in your panel today. What archetype do you feel that Holden is and, uh, and actually heading into season four? Because he took a little bit of a backseat in season three with uh, micromanaging everything. So That's uh, right. for Holden, for you, what archetype is he, you feel? That's a great question. I, um, I, I try actually to shy away from, from archetypes as, yeah. a, as a thing to kind of base characters on because I feel like it, you run the risk of moving into generality. Mm -hmm. you know? So I think for Holden, he has such a specific journey. And, you know, if there's any kind of archetype that he's kind of creeping into at the moment, um, there is a kind of pseudo prophet like thing going on by the end of season three. Um, it is certainly a journey of a, a man becoming more enlightened from the beginning. You know, he's, he's kind of a very naive um, man when you meet him at first and he's kind of cocky and he's not all that likable and he. You know, the more he experiences and the more he goes through these kind of painful events, the more humility he takes on. And by the time he kind of lands on his feet, it speaks to him and it kind of rips the, you know, the rug out from under him. And um, at, at, by the end of season three, I think if there were any archetype in, in general yeah. that I would be pulling from, it would be something like that, the, the prophet. We, uh, we were huge Game of Thrones fans, and we talked about, you know, Colden kind of being like a little bit of the Jon Snow in space. He has no other choice, and he feels he has this obligation to do what's right. Sure. And, you, you know, he says failing for it, so I found that super interesting. But our Jon Snow is way more handsome. So one of the things I really liked, and, you know, uh, we, we actually uh, saw a little bit of how you guys got to do... Uh, the, the watch for season three together. And mm -hmm. you had that little tidbit earlier where you said, you know, Steven sweetened me up with some dark chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, uh, from the fans' perspective, you know, they all, fans love to see, you know, the camaraderie that you guys have talked about. Can you guys kind of talk about maybe some of the things that you experienced together? You know, you talked about the rehearsal, but maybe some little tidbits that fans wouldn't normally get to. Like, what, some of the things that you experienced together, Wes. Well, one of the story, one thing that Stephen and I, that's a really important moment in my life, and I, I've told her a few times, but I don't know how, how often I've told her if you're of it, but uh, my wife's here, Jen, she was uh, pregnant with my first, and she calls me at three in the morning, and it was in the wintertime, I was in Toronto, and I got up, I remember like pacing in the snow, and she said uh, she was in labor, and so I said, well, I'm getting on a plane, I'm leaving right now, and then I called the production, and she said, my wife said, listen, Relax. They said it was going to be a while. Da da da. And so I called production and I said, "Hey, I gotta go." And they go, "Okay, hold on," because we we shoot in blocks and it was yeah. the last day of that block. And then the next day was starting another thing. And if we didn't finish this scene that Stephen and I had, then they would have to keep that whole crew and the whole director and everything for that block. But I, was, I mean, I was like, "This is my kid. I don't care." And then she talked me into it. She's like, "No, stay." 
And then, you know, we do this. So poor Stephen, we had, I mean, I'm, I was there and I was just stunned. I mean, I don't even know. It, it was the scene in season one. We are fixing the antenna. We are fixing the antenna. Sure. <laughs> antenna. And I, I, to this day, don't remember anything, shooting that or anything. I just, this is all I remember. It's like him patting my shoulder and going, go. <laughs> go, go. That go. Scene too, is like, you're, you're peering into the abyss of outer space, and I feel like you were kind of just like, you know, scrubbing stuff and like removed at like a thing. <laughs> yeah, and that's, yeah. And, that's then, cool. and, 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 and then I get on the plane, right? I get on the plane and I'm a nervous wreck. And then uh, I, when I'm on the plane, I call Jen and I go, hey, I'm going to make it. We're on the plane. They got me in on time. And she says, uh, it, the baby's coming right now. And then she, she, she was like going through things. And as soon as she said that, they said, you have to turn your phone off because we're about to take off. And I was like, I can't. Wait. So I turned the phone off. And then there's a six hour flight. And on Air Canada, there's no internet. So it's just six hours. I'm from flight. Canada, by the way. I'm from yeah. Boston, Saint Marie, Ontario. So I know all about the okay. <laughs> Yeah, so I've had enough. Right, right, right. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Uh, ladies, would you like to go? Um, yeah, so you guys have been playing these characters for several years. Um, you really built out them sort of um, independent from the book and the show. So I was wondering if you ever got um, the script and thought, oh, I don't think that's something that Amos or Holden would do. And like, how much collaboration would there be um, with those, the showrunners? Well, we're we're super um, lucky to have uh, Narraine and the other executive producers who are involved in the creative side uh, to be as open as they are. You know, and within within these rehearsals that we do, the writers come as well and the director comes and you know, it's a kind of, it's a, it's kind of a group think we, we work through the script and any, any time that there is uh, questions or, you know, concerns or just something to clarify something, it usually comes up then so that we can figure it out before we get to set. Um, and usually, um, usually when someone uh, needs a little more clarity on why a character is uh, motivated to do something or whatever, um, they can explain it. Or if it if it needs a little bit of work, they can you know do whatever they want to do with it. I mean, again, it is a luxury, you know, and it's um, you know it is a, a privilege to be able uh, to be in that situation in the first place. It's a very rare uh, kind of culture that we have. It kind of feels more akin to a theater company than it does. A TV show, and uh, it is a very uh, communal effort. You know, even even with our crew and with. I noticed uh, you said that earlier. The first thing when you said, I noticed you said crew directors, and then you said actors. You said crew first, and I was like, Yeah, this guy knows what's up. Yeah, and you know what? I mean, that's our family. It's yeah. our family, and we have pretty much pretty much the same crew from the first year. And even when we got um, even when we got canceled. And there was no guarantee that we were going to come back. I mean, far from it. Um, they waited without any guarantee that we were going to come back for over a month, you know, and they were being offered other work. These are people with responsibilities and families and mortgages and all kinds of stuff. And it was something I was most proud of because I think it was a real testament to what we have on our set. People really love to come to work on the set. It feels important. The work feels important. Okay, so you can't just... stop the work. <laughs> you can't, can't stop, stop the work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we have this time. Yeah. Yes, indeed, indeed. Um, but yeah, we're we're very we're very lucky to have um, to have this kind of community that we kind of work this story through. Awesome. Thank you. Sure. Um, so I thought season three had. Um, there's been there's been some ambiguous relationships on the show, and I was wondering if we got to see any more of Amos and Prax in the upcoming season. Like, um, an ambiguous relationship gets resolved. I don't I don't know if it's the end of Prax's story. Mm -hmm. uh, he is continuing in the world in season four, um, and I don't so you don't see him physically in season four. There is a reference to him, and then I don't know if he comes back up as the series progresses. But that's a good question. That my relationship with Prax was one of the most interesting relationships that I've gotten to, you know, exp to explore and everything on on the show. If you wanted to elaborate on that, that'd be great. Well, I don't know what the how, you know <laughs> yeah. it, what the what the the trajectory is, you know, like or or you know how much where we're going to pick up from that point forward. Great, thank you. So I had a fun question for you guys. Let's say. Yeah, you know, Stephen, you weren't picked as Holden, and Wes, you weren't picked as Amos, and you're all shuffled around. Who would you play 
in this series. <laughs> like, who would we want to play? Yeah, or who exactly. Would like, who, like, who, who, could, who could you see yourself playing as another character? Miller. Oh, I could totally see that. Man. Miller. Can I, can I say the same thing? <laughs> <laughs> I can see you driving the ship, too. Yeah. <laughs> it's all sweaty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, would, I think being a detective in a crime noir oh, type man. space series, I think that would be really interesting to do. I also think uh, the Butcher of Anderson Station, Fred, mm. Fred Johnson, I think that would be a good character. He's here. He's oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, just we, saw him. Yeah, we just yeah. saw him. Cool. Yeah, I, yeah, he's yeah. Great dude, Chad. Um, let's get this one. Yeah, let's. Uh, some other projects. Wes, you're uh, going. You're, are you in. Is it an action movie? Yeah, Escape Plan 2. Escape, Escape Plan. Plan 2, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, we shot it here in Atlanta. Oh, cool. cool. Yeah, and I was, I, was, I was saying it's so weird. Because I grew up here, yeah. I grew up, you know, a couple hours north or an hour north, and uh, to be able to come to Atlanta for work, because I did three movies here, and uh, and and being here for this Dragon Con, and it's just so surreal. We were shooting in a, uh, it, they they turned a tire station, um, a tire warehouse into a studio, which is in Norcross, which is three. Uh, you know, three blocks from where my aunt lives. And so you're there and you're like, hey, you want to meet Special Salon? She's like, yeah, I'll walk on over. And kind of like, all these worlds are colliding, you know, it's just crazy. It's crazy. Um, season four is coming, but season five has also been greenlit. Yes. For you guys, obviously you had to deal with the stress of maybe not knowing that The Expanse is coming back, but how do you feel about that now? Now, now you know you're for sure getting a certain amount of story, right? Yeah, but it feels so good, man. <laughs> it's an incredible relief and a and a nice uh, vote of confidence. You know, I think, um, you know, I, I I do think this season that we made is the best one we've made so far. And I think, um, you know, one of the things I'm really proud of about this show is that we continue to evolve, and that we have this passionate group that is always looking for ways to get better. And, um, you know, they've seen season four and, um, and their reaction to it, you know, signing us up for a fifth season four months before it even premieres, uh, was an incredible kind of, you know, vote of confidence for everybody. And it's, it, it's you can, when you're feeling secure as an artist, especially in this business, which is so like <laughs> haphazard, um, it's kind of the most amazing luxury ever. We never know where the hell we're going to be at least six months. No. I have one more question. Oh, that's okay, guys. Um, so I, I love the story earlier, Wes, when you talked about uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark and mm -hmm. Star Wars. You know, we're all like we all have our first experience with you know Lord. It was Lord of the Rings for me when I was growing up reading The Hobbit. But for you guys, what are you kind of reading? Like, what are you guys into? Like, yeah, you know, you said you're both into sci-fi. What are you guys currently into right now? Uh, I just Other TV shows, movies. Right. So I I, I love Stephen King. And uh, I just downloaded because I know they're doing Doctor Sleep. They're making it into a movie, mm -hmm. and I didn't read it at first because The Shining is one of my favorites. One of my favorite, the the Kubrick movie is one of my favorite movies of all time. It's one of my favorite King novels, and so I I didn't I didn't hear great things about Doctor Sleep. So I knew I was going to get to it. So I kind of like hesitant or whatever. But now that they're doing a movie or whatever, I'm definitely jumping into that. That's that's probably what I'm. That's probably next on my list to read. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for that. Uh, I'm in the middle of reading uh, The Unconsoled by Ishitiro, um, which I, I love his books. Like, I just can't get enough. Um, it's the last one of his I haven't read. And uh, it's not sci-fi sci necessarily, but it, it, it definitely has a... He, his tone is so unique, and I kind of... He's got like a Nabokov-y, uh, kubrick -y, uh, like Hitchcocky kind of feel to his writing, so it's not science fiction per se, but it definitely has this kind of otherness to it. This air of kind of um, you're in this kind of alternate universe in a in a very interesting way. Um, and in terms of TV and film, I uh, I'm looking forward to seeing our our colleague uh, uh, Jared Harris's Chernobyl, which I haven't seen oh, yet. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah, I heard it's I heard it's amazing. I'm, I'm not surprised. That tonight. Yeah. yeah. Um, one one comment we have a, a picture of you admiring coffee at the panel earlier. Uh, I'm going to share that with you, Steven. You're, like, you're, you're looking at it like your eye like a big steak. And it's awesome. You know that's what he has in common. Right? Oh. I, I, drink, oh, yeah. I drink Ethiopian coffee. I drink Yirgacheff and Sadama, so I'm a big coffee nerd. So uh, I, just, I, I thought it was super funny. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah. Sorry. Um, 
Okay, uh, I'm gonna loop it back to the expanse. But, um, <laughs> what character relationships, like intercharacter relationships, were you most excited to explore in season four? In season four? Yeah. Um, I was most excited for season four to explore actually this relationship um, because I, I had read ahead and um, and I knew just how intense uh, Holden and Amos' journey was going to be. Um, in a very different kind of circumstance, we're outside. It's a different, um, it's, it's got a d different feel and a different tone to it. So I was looking forward to that. And, um, and then, you know, with uh, Broden Miller, which I think is, 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 such, an, it, what is such an interesting, okay. yeah, it's, it's such a unique kind of like interesting relationship to explore. You know, you, as an actor, you just don't get those kind of relationships very often, I mean. Really, it's got that kind of like magical realism in space. Yeah, sure. right. Um, and it's, it's like y'all, well, Wes, do you have? Here? Well, yeah, I mean, I think there there is a relationship um, that Amos has in season four that is unlike any relationship that he's ever had with somebody. And you'll see sides of Amos that you haven't seen. And also, there, uh, going back to our relationship, there is a... Um, there is a role shift that we have um, that I think is was fascinating to play and very interesting to explore, and uh, and I can't wait till we can show that on season four. Sure. Um, so similar to like, what character would you like to play? Is there a character you um, like? I love the giant cast, and there's so many interesting dynamic relationships. Is there a character that you wish you could do more on screen work, or that you haven't? That you wish your character could interact with. I like Drummer. I think she's oh, like yeah, that's that's true. Her <laughs> she's my favorite character, and I think I'm like man, I wish we had some scenes together. I don't yeah. we don't think we've had any scenes together. So yeah. Um, um, I'm well, sorry. That's the last no, question. no, that's the last question. Yeah. Um, Give a turn. So. Yeah. Um, my last question is: What do you what do you really hope the audience gets out of season four? What are you hoping that your your viewers really get out of this? Arc? You, you know, I think. Um, just in terms of the actual production itself, uh, you know, we came into this season under such an unusual circumstance, uh, having been saved by our fans. So I think we all came into this season with a renewed sense of gratitude and, um, and this kind of uh, promise to double our efforts for their work. And, um, you know, we really do owe this to them. And, uh, I think everyone from the crew to the writers to the cast, uh, we came in uh, to do our damnedest to make sure that their work uh, really was honored. And um, we did our best, and I think I think we might have pulled it off. Well, it's better than season three, I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> you just wait. That's, that's oh. Thanks, man. Just to echo to what he said real quick before we have to leave, I think, um, Unlike anything I've ever been a part of, anything I've ever done, I've never had this fan connection to the show. And it's almost like we're making it together. And there's a kind of experience that we have. And so I am, I would be a fan of this if I wasn't a part of it. So being able to part of it, and it's like, I'm a fan right along with them. So it's like a camaraderie in a group. Like, yeah, it's like we can talk about the show. And every time I run into somebody that loves the show, if I at a grocery store, it's always really great, interesting conversations that we have. And when they come and say uh, hello, and so n the fact that we had this amazing experience, and now we're coming back, there is this renewed and, and all this great stuff that's happening to the show, and this and how popular the show, and, and all that stuff. There's a certain kind of a renewed enthusiasm and energy going back. When we went to season four, I mean, it's just like we we had a mission. I mean, we worked harder on season four than we worked, at, and we've always worked hard. But I mean, we just put everything in, into it because it's like. It's, it means more to us, you know, it's like a, it's a deeper thing for us now. Almost like a rebirth. Of yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Thank you so much. Guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, I appreciate it. it. And uh, if you guys, do you, uh, would you mind taking a picture with the yeah. Sure. Yeah, that'd be great. Like yeah. a selfie, a fun yeah. selfie. Yeah. Yeah.